How's it going everyone, Toggy here. The dust hasn't even settled on the last two Windows handhelds that were released earlier this year, and we already have another contender that is aiming to be your handheld of choice if you've been waiting on the sidelines for a larger option. And today's handheld fits that metric more than anything else that I've reviewed on this channel, as this is currently the largest Windows gaming handheld you can buy. Ever since Dell showcased their UFO prototype, we've seen many companies try to take on this new gaming niche, but before today, no one actually tried to mimic the size of the UFO. And now that someone has, I can clearly say that the One X player is a monster. I'll have a full review on this device later on, but for now, I just want to go over some important points before we take a look at what this device can do. On the top left side, you can see our analog stick. These analog sticks are actually some of the best aspects of this device. They feel mechanically similar to the ones in the GPD Win 3, which are easily the best in class at this point. These aren't switch analog sticks, and they are clickable, and this orange ring around the analog makes it so that the analog will never grind against the frame and leave a ring on the shaft, which is a common problem in other devices. Above this, we have an Xbox toggle view button, which functions as a select button. Below this, we have a conductive rubber D-pad, which is not as bad as the other D-pads in the last two One Netbook handhelds, but it definitely could use some modifications. Under this, you have a function button, which acts as a show desktop button, and this is a great way to quickly break out of any application. You'll also notice that we have a front firing speaker on the bottom handle, and I will say that the volume on this is not terribly loud at its maximum level, but it should be sufficient for times that you don't have access to some headphones. On the other side, we have our second analog stick and our ABXY buttons branded in the Xbox control style, along with our Xbox pause button on the top. On the bottom, you have two function keys, with the first pulling up the on-screen keyboard in the same way that it does on the Aya Neo, and a turbo button which will increase your TDP, which is not terribly useful in my opinion. Moving on over to the top, and you can see one of my major gripes with this device in that it is a fingerprint magnet like no other. I haven't bothered to wipe this down on the top or on the back, so I can clearly demonstrate what this looks like from real use. We have a set of chunky shoulder buttons for L and R1, and we also have a set of analog shoulder buttons which work very well. The mechanism on these isn't as solid as it is on other products, but as it stands right now, we only have two handhelds that have analog input, and both of them are pretty close in feel. In the middle, you have a micro SD card slot, two USB Type-C ports, a full-size USB port, so this definitely wins out on the I.O. front with that and the addition of the headphone jack. You'll also see that we have two big exhausts here, and as you can imagine, these take in air from the back and push them out through the top. This is the same kind of dual cooling design that One Netbook has used in their last two products. Transitioning over to the back and you'll see that we have a strange placement of our volume buttons on the right back rest, along with a mute button on the left. Hopefully these can be remapped to other functions in the future. You'll also notice that we have crossbar vents with a dust filter on the other side to pull in air for cooling. I will mention that you will hear these fans get rather loud as we bump the TDP up to 28 watt, and I will do some fan tests against this and other handhelds in a future video so you can compare for yourself. But if you keep this to a manageable TDP, these won't bother you and you'll get some of the best battery life in this generation, thanks in large part to a huge battery that this comes with. My unit charges up to around 54 watt hours, which is really good for this chip. We also have our very first built-in stand in a Windows handheld, and I can't tell you how thankful I am that they included this because it makes using this device much easier. As for the grips, this is the only Windows handheld so far that has something that I would classify as a grip, and they do a decent job. There's nothing important on the bottom except to mention that there is a connection for a keyboard, and I did get to use the keyboard at a testing event a while ago, and I will say that the keyboard is actually a really nice accessory for this product. It's highly usable, and it's what makes this device a little more useful than other products on the market right now. That leaves us with our screen, and this is definitely what a lot of people have been asking for. There's always at least one guy looking at the devices that I review saying that he wishes it came with a proper size screen, and I think that this is the limit of how big that you'd want something like this to be. When you're looking at it and you're seeing it in this video, you're going to be thinking that this is big, and it is a big handheld, there's no getting around that. That being said, there's no time where I would rather be looking at a different size handheld than this one if all things were equal from buttons to power consumption to gaming performance. The size of this screen is just more enjoyable to look at than other devices. You're not going to be squinting or having any difficulty seeing what's on screen with this handheld. The only problem is that the brightness isn't terribly high for how beefy this device is and the color temperature is a little too far on the blue side for my liking, but you should be able to fine tune that in the driver application. For this first video, I wanted to do a mix of emulation and PC gaming tests to see what this chip can do. This chip isn't new to me because it's the same one in the Win 3, but having a bigger battery and hopefully better cooling should mean that we can get higher performance that isn't realistic on the Win 3 when you're looking at only one hour of battery life. 
On screen is Breath of the Wild running at 720p using CMU at 28 watts. Vulcan would run much better than this, but it can take a long time to build up a cache on this chip, and OpenGL runs with only minor graphical issues. Next up we have PSP running at 4x native resolution using around 12 watt TDP, but you could push this down a little further if you wanted to extend battery life. This next one is actually a surprise. Here we have God of War 2 running at 3x native resolution, which I've never bothered to try on handheld yet, largely due to the fact that we haven't had a powerful device with a large screen resolution before today. GameCube is also a breeze at 3x native resolution with double dash. Now let's take a look at some gaming tests. These are the games that I currently have installed on my device, and I will say that it's kind of a pain to only have 512 gigabytes of storage on a device this powerful when you consider that some Steam games that can run no problem on this device can easily take up a fourth or a fifth of your available storage. On screen you can see Borderlands 3 running at 28 watts, which is a little high and I'd probably lower this to 22 watt when I'm not filming to guarantee 2 hours of battery life, but this game is amazing on such a big screen. I was actually shocked at how much of a difference this added screen real estate would make for a game like this, but I love playing this game on this device. Here we have Resident Evil 3 running at 800p, 28 watt, with all the graphics settings on their lowest values. The FPS does dip in some situations, but the lowest values are still pretty good. And finally we have Monster Hunter World running at 720p lowest settings. This game can take a ton of power to run, but this device is doing a good job. Anyway, that's it for this first look of 1X Player. This device is currently selling over on Indiegogo from One Netbook, and I'll put a link to their page in the description box below if you want to check out more information. I now have all the devices that have come out so far, so if there's any comparisons that you'd like to see, or any games that you'd like to see on the X Player itself, feel free to leave those down below, and I'll do my best to include those in a future video. Happy gaming, everyone. Talkie out.